Alrighty, so our tools today for the job of replacing the mixer balancer on the Kohler shower are going to be the mixer balancer, which we got from Kohler, our uh, silicone to seal everything up after we're done, our silicone grease, which is going to go onto our O-rings, and of course our Allen wrench, which is going to take off the uh, fixtures. Now, probably going to need a Phillips screwdriver uh, and maybe maybe a wrench or something. I don't know. But these are the basic tools that you got to have to do this job. And let's get to the job. Okay, so that sound you hear in the background, that's the fan going for the uh, for the exhaust fan. And uh, I could actually shut that off. So actually, ah, there we go. Now, step one is obviously watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos on how to do this job. Step two is to lay out all your tools. Now, I, I know in the very beginning I showed you just a few tools, um, essentials, but uh, you can never have too many tools. So I laid out a bunch more. This is a utility knife and it's for cutting the circle, the old silicone around the valve. Because uh, you may be wondering, this is for pulling out the uh, unit over here, which everyone has a different name for. I think it's a pressurizer. And then of course, a couple of Phillips and one flathead screwdriver and a motorized uh, Phillips, just cause I'm lazy. And then we have our grease. Now I've seen they have a kit. I think this one has it. Yes, yes, yes. I can see, I don't know. Can you see it in there? We'll pop it out. They give you a little tiny ampule, capsule, ampule, whatever you want to call it, of grease. But we have our Danco grease which I really like. So we can use either one, it doesn't matter. Both silicone grease, both non-petroleum based, we won't uh, swell the O-rings, which is good. Uh, we don't want our O-rings swelled. They've already pre-installed, it looks like, our O-rings on the package, which is nice also. Give us some new screws, some extra O-rings. Uh, cute little picture on the back here, sort of. And of course, there's an instruction sheet on the inside in case you rip this apart. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So tools are laid out. Next step is to shut off the water. Let's go do that. Okay, so this is my uh, mains right here. I'm gonna shut these off. Then I'm running back upstairs to make sure that everything is shut off. I'm gonna drain the line real quick. And once the line is drained, I can start work. All right, let's go. All righty, folks, so what I'm doing right now is I have uh, used uh, this little dab will do you, so to speak. Actually, I'm going to use a little extra. Never hurts to use a little extra of the lube around the orifice. So many jokes here. So many jokes here, folks. So many. Okay, so what I'm done is I just looked at this unit. I pre-lubed this. I put the uh, O-rings over here. And if you look at the instructions, you'll see it says cold right there. So if we look right here, can we see this? Is this going to focus? Focus, focus you. Cold, it says cold right there. So this tells me that this is the cold side when this is going in. So I know that this is gonna be on top. Now another important thing to, you need to know is which side is the top on your uh, mixer valve. And the easiest way to tell which side the mixer valve is, is you've got this piece right over here, this big piece right here. This is the this is called a stop. So this thing that I'm, that I'm Focusing in on, that's the stop. So that prevents this from over traveling because there is a Allen screw right here. And I am gonna turn this until it stops there. So this would be if the valve was completely open, you want hot water and everything blasting. So you do it all the way to there. That's the stop. Now I can flip this back around so that it'll be shut off when I go and install this. So when I turn the water on, it won't be blasting out at a billion gallons per second. It's got a lot of cautions on here. Probably gonna need some glasses to read this. But this has been pre-lubed. Uh, these guys right over here, uh, these are the O-rings and as you can see from the diagram, there's the O-rings right there. These O-rings, I pre-lubed those and installed them. And probably gonna put a little bit of lube right around there. Uh, and the other thing I'm gonna use lube on, by the way, is this other O-ring, which goes around the circumference of this. I'll point to it. Here you go. So this goes around this annular circumference right here. 
And we're going to lube that up as well to help this pop in. Again, so many jokes here, folks. So many jokes about lube. But yeah, this will help it pop right in. Now, I have heard that uh, if you don't lube it, you can break the pipe from forcing it. You don't want to force it in there. Uh, so the lube is really important. Uh, the silicone lube, again, a non-petroleum based lube because petroleum products will cause these things, I am told, to swell and erode them, which would cause, uh, yeah, which would not be good. Okay, so this is the shower in question, and the first thing we're going to do is remove this handle. And the way you do that is there is a little hole right there. Can you see that? And what we have to do is find the, uh, the Allen screw, which is usually on the bottom. And part of this is feeling around for it. And there we go. I think I found it. And <laughs> nobody ever shows you this part of it because you need two hands to sort of figure it out. So you'll see this with the uh, handle removed. But yes, it's the Allen screw going into that tiny hole to remove it. There you go. As you can see, it works just like that. And next, we're going to take off that collar, and then we're going to cut around the silicone and remove the outer scutcheon while removing that Phillips head screw. Okay, the screws are out. I've cut around the rubber seal, uh, which I made with the, the other stuff with the silicone and from the old silicone. And here we go. We're pulling it right off. And there it is. It's out. You can see it now. You got two screws there, and then that comes off. We're going to keep that and uh, replace the rest of the unit. Very quick and simple. Okay, so I just pulled this off and popped right off. And now I'm going to reach in with my needle nose pliers and pull out this unit right here. And oh, first out comes the uh, couple of O-rings. We'll drop those on the ground. And then we're going to. Do, I wish I had more light in here. We're going to do a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I should get it out. I may have to do this just by hand. Ah, she's coming up. Oh, she's coming out. She's coming out, folks. Here she comes. This is like uh, watching the uh, Geraldo Rivera pull out the, the vault of Al Capone. Yeah. And she's out. All right. Let's take a look at what we got in there. Not too bad. Actually, the camera picks it up better than my eyes. So we're going to pop the new one in and uh, call her a day. All right. And as you can see, just so you know the orientation, here we can see cold again. So that's the cold. And uh, it's going to go just like that, right back in. All right, let's do it. Uh, one of the problems with getting old is the ability to see uh, without light. So what I'm doing is I put on a headlamp. And now I can sort of get in there with the lamp and sort of see all the crud and crap that's in there. Uh, and it's not too bad, but yeah, it's definitely going to be wiped out. So I'm going to wipe it out and then pop in the new one. Alrighty. Just wanted to give you a view of what this looks like with some some actual light in it. Alright, the new pressure port is in. I didn't hear it pop, but it is seated and it's not moving, so that's a good sign. So with this in here, I'm gonna, can I see back there? Probably not. I think the camera gets in the way. I can kind of see. And yeah, it definitely looks like it's seated. So, all right, we're gonna put the mixer on, screw it in, and it should be good. All right. All righty, the new mixer is on. And I put it in with the, uh, the little screw gun there, but that doesn't have a lot of torque. So I'm gonna come in over here and just make sure that these Screws are really torqued down uh, because I want those O-rings to seat nice and tight. So I'm not going to over twist it. At least I'm not going to try to over twist it. But I am going to make it tight because I don't want any leaks and I don't want this to leak anymore um, because that would suck. All right, now to put it all back together and turn the water back on and test it out. Okay.
All right, folks, we're just about done with this job. I just put on the advanced silicone stuff. Now, it says on it specifically low odor somewhere on here. Where does it say? That? Oh, yeah, low odor right there, low odor. It still stinks. Now, it doesn't stink as bad as the old stuff stank, but it still stinks. So if you have a sensitivity to that smell, and I think you know the smell I'm talking about for silicone, uh, then you might want to use something else. Having said that, this is the best stuff I've ever used. I've never had a problem with a leak after using this stuff, so I highly recommend it and I just deal with the smell. So let's put it all back together and turn on the water and be done with this project. There's the parts from the old one. Here we go, we've put this on. Uh, as you can see, it's still glistening. The, uh, I'm just tightening up the screws here. Always good to have tight screws. And we are in the off position. I think it said it takes, it takes a little while for this stuff to dry, but uh, it's very waterproof, which is great, which is its purpose. Don't forget the screw underneath here, two screws. And then we can put on the last two pieces, which is gonna be the, uh, which is gonna be this. And we're gonna put this on just like this. There we go. We'll align this directly with the bottom. Now, because this is with the bottom, we know our handle is going to be focus, focus. God damn it. Why is this not focusing? Piece of crap. So. All right, we're all back together now. And this is turning really nicely. We've got a nice rotation over here. And what I'm going to do is uh, go turn that back on the water, clean up the floor, and uh, we will be done with this job, assuming there's no more leaks, which we've been trying to get rid of. So folks, what I just realized is, is I forgot to put back this uh, plate right there. So I got to go put that back on. Oops. Hooray. Look at that. No more drippy leaks. Project completed. Yay. All right. Thank you, YouTube viewers and YouTube itself, because I wouldn't have learned how to do this without YouTube.